Americans get sick more often than Europeans and people in other industrialized countries, and they're getting sicker. Since the mid-90s, the number of Americans suffering from at least three chronic illnesses nearly doubled, and America's international ranking for infant mortality and lifespan also plunged. There are many reasons why this is taking place. One may be right in front of you. They take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. The very process of genetic engineering creates unpredicted side effects. It does not exist anywhere in nature. They can put it on the market without telling the FDA or consumers. Every single cell within that plant is producing a toxic protein. BT is designed to break open the stomach of insects and kill them. The EPA got it wrong. It does break open little pores in human cells, and it might cause the same kind of disruption in our guts as it's causing in the insects that it kills. How did my son get these food allergies? Our food supply is genetically modified. And guess what? The food that my son ate on August 25th, 2009 was raw corn. The corn that almost killed him. We're continuing to feed our GMO contaminated food to our children. The vast majority of genetically modified crops are engineered to make it easier for farmers to kill weeds. For example, Monsanto's Roundup Ready crops, which comprise most of today's GMOs, can survive applications of Monsanto's best-selling weed killer, Roundup. Plants treated with Roundup have a reduction in available nutrients. They're weak and they're sick. The animals that eat the nutrient-deficient plants they become nutrient deficient and weak and sick. Then we eat the animals and the plants that are nutrient deficient, and we may become weak and sick. In addition, the residues of the Roundup in the plant can end up in our bodies where they can chelate, hug some of the nutrients that are in our bodies, making them less available as well. Lab animals fed Roundup ready soy have had serious reproductive disorders. In mice, the testicles changed, including damage to the young sperm cells. In rats, there were changes in the uterus and ovaries. The DNA functioned differently in the embryo offspring of mice. When female rats were fed genetically modified soy, more than half of their babies died within three weeks. The babies were also smaller and could not reproduce. Children are particularly more sensitive to GMOs for several reasons than adults. Number one is they have higher metabolic rates, they metabolize food quicker, they need more food, and their cells gr are changing quicker. They, they are growing rapidly, so they have a higher uh, cell turnover, they have higher metabolic rates, higher respiratory rates, so they require more nutrition, they eat more. And number two is that children are more sensitive to smaller doses of toxins than adults. We don't respond to toxins the same way. Their immune system is not prepared for it. Any gene change changes that can be passed on to the baby, can be passed on to future generations, and it's a new field of genetics called epigenetics, and that's what I'm worried about, that we, I thought, in the, in the old genetic days, we thought that genes weren't so mutable, and we now know that's not true. When I first discovered that, it, that GMO was in infant formula and infant food, I, I was outraged. We can't say for sure that GMOs have anything to do with autism, but we can't say for sure that it doesn't. In fact, there's been an increase in autism since GMOs were introduced, and animals that eat GMOs, both in laboratory and in livestock situations, have shown some telltale signs that some practitioners say are linked with autism. The goal of Monsanto was to replace all natural seed, to have all global agriculture completely driven by genetically modified seed and to create a market for the chemicals associated with those gen genetically modified seed. Uh, there was no sense of nature. There was discussion of how to eliminate natural seed. When I get in discussions with people, they say, well, the government reviewed them, the governments approved them, uh, there were mountains of studies done. They couldn't have gotten it that wrong, and if it was so bad, somebody would speak up about it. 
but in, in reality, the few people that have spoken up about it have, have paid a high personal and, and professional price for it. Because of the direct uh, investments of these companies in our universities, new professors know very well that if you expect to get tenure, don't do any negative research on GMOs. Ultimately, the buck stops at the scientists evaluating. That's me. Then, if I agree, then I'm part of the corruption. That's happening. If I don't agree, I get fired. I chose to be fired. People always ask me, can we reverse the damage from eating a genetically modified diet? Well, mice in an Italian study give us some hope. They were fed genetically modified soy for eight months and showed damage to their livers, pancreas, and testicles. But when they were put on a non-GM soy diet for the next month, a lot of the problems reversed. I've had a lot of different patients come in with various stages of chronic disease. That's what I specialize in, sort of these complex cases. And by changing the diet around, uh, changing their nutritional status, a lot of the things that they come in with literally just go away. There are only nine genetically modified food crops, but their derivatives are found in over 70% of the foods in the supermarket, particularly the processed foods. There are four ways to avoid GMOs. By organic, by products that say non-GMO, by products listed in our non-GMO shopping guide, or avoid the at-risk ingredients altogether. Principally, soy, corn, cottonseed oil, canola oil, and sugar from sugar beets. Most of those crops are genetically engineered. So if it's grown in the US and it doesn't say organic or non-GMO, it's genetically engineered. The failure to disclose in this, um, to me, is the real issue. Europe labels these things, Australia labels these things, Asia labels these things, and yet here in the US, we've all just been blissfully ignorant. I have a problem with that because it's not in the best interest of my family. It's hard enough as a mom to have to go in and read every label. Your time's limited, and you really have to be knowledgeable about it. It should, be, it should have been in there all along. I feel like we were tricked. These products are on the shelf before you even know they are, and now they're in, in everything. I don't want to be a human lab rat, and I certainly don't want my two-year-old daughter to be a human lab rat. The GMO labeling issue is on fire in the United States. Bills have been introduced in 19 states. Although none have yet gotten past Monsanto's lobbying and influence peddling, in California we have a real chance of victory because in California it's a ballot initiative. People vote directly. So we finally have a chance to get what 9 out of 10 Americans have wanted for more than a decade, mandatory labeling of genetically engineered foods. I have enough questions about this technology to wonder what's happening with us. Uh, we have studies that say everything's okay that in the industry, an industry that I don't trust. We have studies by independent doctors that say there are huge questions and that there are problems. There have been no long-term human studies done on this, and I, as a grandmother and a mother, am outraged that our government and that our agencies are not taking care of this for us. They're not protecting us. We have a right to know what we're putting inside of our bodies. The entire world is looking to California because we can turn it around from this one place. The enormity of the threat is unprecedented in history. All living beings, all future generations. So the enormity of the solution is something that we cannot afford to let slip away. You know, if you like GMOs, you think they're great, okay, label it, you know, just be proud of it. Buy it, label it, and you know, but we have a right not to buy it. So, you know, that's our issue. And you know, we're taking that to Washington. You know, we gotta bring outside pressure. We gotta bring a wake up call to FDA. And yeah, make our voices heard. We're taking back the power to the people. I just want these corrupt governments and corporations to leave my body alone, to leave my family alone, to me, leave my milk alone, my food alone, my family alone, my community alone. I can take care of myself. The whole world can take care of itself. How do we get rid of genetically engineered foods? It's much easier than you think. And we don't have to ask the government for a bailout. We can do it ourselves. 
In Europe, when they achieved the tipping point of consumer rejection at the end of April 1999, within about a week, most major food companies committed to stop using GM ingredients. They had become a marketing liability. This impacts everything and everyone. It's not just an agriculture issue, it's not just a food industry issue, it's an ever-living creature issue. It's the most dangerous thing facing human beings in our generation. It's in our hands. It's right in front of us. It's just a matter of avoiding genetically modified foods and inspiring others to do the same.